subepithelial tumours or neoplasms cover a huge range of pathologies. Although these lesions can easily be identified at EUS, most do not have a characteristic appearance. For that reason, this module will focus on some of the more common important SETs. Without generalizing too much, lyomyomata tend to occur in the esophagus, whereas GIS are generally found in the stomach. The other common lesion in the stomach is the pancreatic rest. The management of GIS is a controversial area. They have their own specific TNM staging, which is given here. It is recommended that GIS over the size of 2 cm should be resected. Ideally, those under 2 cm should also be resected, but if not, they need close following with EUS or CT. The mitotic index gives some indication as to prognosis. Unfortunately, though, the samples obtained at EUS are not reliable for ascertaining this. GIS are usually associated with the muscularis propria layer, but smaller ones can rarely rise from the muscularis mucosa. Often it can be difficult to know which layer the lesion is arising from, so the key area to focus in on is the edge of the lesion, where we can see layers separating to envelop the abnormality. This patient was not suitable for surgery, but an FNA was taken to provide some modicum of reassurance in respect of mitotic index, although accuracy is not good. Moving on, this shows the classical hyperechogenicity of a lipoma. This is another classical appearance. Here we are looking at an umbilicated lesion in the antrum. Internally, in the subepithelial space, there are some cystic areas, which are rudimentary ducts. All of this suggests an ectopic pancreas. In this final subepithelial example, we see an isolated esophageal varics.